we sometimes encounter in specific problems, linear systems where all right-hand sides are zero. These systems are called homogeneous. When I was a student, I thought them quite silly. Those systems have the solution x equals zero. Yeah, that's true, of course. But sometimes those systems have more than the zero solution only. That is why this video is dedicated to those homogeneous systems and their inhomogeneous counterparts. A homogeneous system is whenever the right hand side b equals zero. x equals zero is always a system of such a always a solution of such a system, and the solution is called the trivial solution. Now that means that you always have at least one solution of such a system which means that the system can never be inconsistent. Homogeneous system is never inconsistent. Let us look at an example, a small example, just to illustrate the notion of homogeneous versus inhomogeneous. So here we have our homogeneous system, zeros at the right hand side, we already gave the augmented matrix. Well, let us find a solution. So we have to use row reduction, which is trivial. We can just reduce the tools away. And then we are in a shown form. And then we see that we have no inconsistencies. Of course, it's a homogeneous system. We have one free variable. So let's take, for example, x2 free. x2 is free. Then from the first row, we get x1 plus x2 equals 0. So x1 equals minus x2. And let us write down the parametric factor form, put x1 and x2 in a factor, x1, x2 equals x2 times minus 1, 1. And we call this the homogeneous solution. Now, let us look at the inhomogeneous counterpart. So, let us add some right-hand sides. And let's see how the solution looks like now. We do the same reduction step. And we get a row with zeros because we chose the two over here, so the system is not inconsistent. And again, we can choose x2 is free, and now we have x1 equals 1 minus x2. And we, when we write down the parametric fo factor form, we get x1, x2 equals 1 minus x2, x2. And then we see something nice arise. We see that the solution of the inhomogeneous problem is in fact the solution or the sum of two solutions, 1, 0, and x2 times minus 1, 1. And this x2 times minus 1, 1 is exactly the solution of the homogeneous problem. So what do we see? We have our solution is the sum of some particular solution, xp, plus the homogeneous solution. And I hope this reminds you of your linear differential equations. Then something similar happens. Whenever you have an inhomogeneous problem, in the end you end up with a solution consisting of a homogeneous solution and a particular solution. In differential equations, however, you have to look for the particular solution and the homogeneous solution in two separate steps, usually in most methods. Linear algebra is much nicer because in linear algebra you will get them at once. Just nice to notice the similarity. And how does this look geometrically? It's always fun. To look at that, what's the relation geometrically between homogeneous and inhomogeneous problems? So, here yeah, we have the figure. The points satisfying the homogeneous problem are on the blue line, so a line through the origin, of course, zero is a solution. The points satisfying the inhomogeneous problem are on the red line. And then you see straight away the similarity between the two lines. The red line is just a blue line, but it shifted along the factor 1, 0. So that's geometrically the relation between the inhomogeneous problem in red and the homogeneous problem in blue. <laughs>